So yeah, that hurt. A lot. Hello everybody, my name is Jade and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be talking about two things. One, 11 months on HRT. And two, something personal that's been happening in my family. This month on HRT, I've been noticing a few things. First of all, the fat distribution. That's something that's been going on. I've been spending a lot of time voice training and something in my hormonal cycle that I would like to talk about. The voice training is something that I've been very busy with. For the past two weeks, I've been doing it religiously every morning and I think it's starting to pay off. That is something, the details of that is something that I want to go into in another video that I'm going to make because there's a lot happening in voice training. Voice training isn't just raising your voice, it's increasing the pitch, it's creating a sound, it's creating the voice in a different sense, in a different place in your mouth, and also having certain speech patterns that are very feminine instead of very male speech patterns. And I just did an example there for the observant viewer. Another thing is the fat distribution. And this is something personal because I've been really noticing a new fat distribution pattern. My chest got bigger, my ass got bigger, my thighs got bigger. It's basically everywhere where that you would get fat storage as a female. And how did I notice this? Because I have definitely been gaining some weight back, but my stomach, for example, hasn't been growing, which is a typically male pattern place to store fat. But my chest and my ass definitely have been growing. So we know that that's working. And that's actually, for me, a very gender affirming thing to see happening. Isn't a good thing because it means that I still am not losing as much weight as I would like to, but it's a good thing for my gender dysphoria. For the past six months, I have been noticing that uh, during three or four days a month, I have a period where my back hurts, my upper leg muscles, they seem a little bit weaker than usual. I am more irritable, I am a little bit more cranky, I get triggered a little bit more easier and I am very soon quick against that line where you're about to cry but you're just not yet and just not feeling that great in general. Now I'm not saying that I have a period because I can't, I don't have the reproductive system for that. I am saying however that there is a certain hormonal thing going on inside me. And I'm not the only person who notices this because when I first started noticing this, I started Googling it and I ended up in Reddit, I ended up in Discords, I ended up on other sites where there are trans fan people who are talking about experiencing the same kind of symptoms. So there's definitely something there. In order to create some data and for myself, keep myself accountable and make it insightable for myself, I started keeping a log in a book. And maybe at some point I will start to share that. Now, why do I keep that log? Well, it's very simple. It's interesting for me, but also there isn't a lot of research out there in this phenomenon in trans women, because there's so much more in our healthcare that is more important, that has a higher priority, yet it's something that we should try and get our data off. I'm no scientist, but I can maybe create some data and talk about it with my endocrinologist. In a month, I'm going to be releasing a video about 12 months of HRT. And 12 months is a whole year for those of you who don't know. I think most everybody knows. Well, that has been a year. And in that video, I'm going to talk about the things that I expected to happen, things that I least expected to happen, things that I really enjoyed, things that I didn't enjoy that much. And just do a bit of a recap on a year on estrogen. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. Okay, and now to get into the family stuff. A week and a half ago, my mother decided to break off all contact with me. Blocking me on social media, blocking me on messenger apps that we use. And just not talking to me anymore. And that hurt. That hurt a lot. Because the reason that she blocked me, in my eyes and my view, is that I stood up for myself and for my name. Yeah. Before I get too emotional, I want to give a disclaimer here. This is my side of my story. My mother has a side, but this is mine. I'm telling you my perspective. If you know her, don't judge her based solely on my view, but go talk with her as well. Yeah, she blocked me. And the entire situation is a mess. Uh, 
I was, we were having a discussion about another situation that was happening. But during that, we had came into a discussion and discussions between me and my mother always get a bit heated because I have my stance, she has hers, and we are both the kind of people who have a stance and we will defend it. There's just a difference in how we do it. I try and listen to the other. If they come with facts, with things that I can verify, I am willing to alter my view. My mother, not so much. And as usual, my mother and I have opposing views. That's been a trend that's been going on for 15 years now. Uh, the moment I started becoming self-aware and creating my own identity, uh, my mother and I have been butting heads because I believe in things that she doesn't. And well, as is very much in human nature, we consider our own opinion to be the best and to be the most important. And I definitely come back from that. I don't consider myself, my opinion to be the best point. I consider my opinion to be important, but open to listening to others. In my view, my mother doesn't. My mother doesn't take kindly to people disagreeing with her, cutting off contact, breaking it off, going through a different topic of conversation, rather. So yeah, when two strong opinions like that clash, it gets heated. And in the past, I've been the one who apologizes, the one who says sorry, and the one who's been always in the wrong, in that sense of the word. I never really stood up for myself that much or for my own identity. It was usually, I chose the relationship over the self-identity. I stopped doing that a year and a half ago. I started thinking about who I really was, about my own identity. And I decided to stick up for myself more often. And that was what was happening in that situation. I stood up for myself. We were having a discussion, things got heated, and in the heat of the moment, she used my old name to refer to me. At which I cut her off, because I don't enjoy that naming. And I said, no, it's Jade. To which she res wanted to respond using my old name, that naming me again, twice in one minute, to which I cut her off again, and I said, no, it's Jade. She started to walk away out of the conversation. And at that point, I said to her, well, it's been 11 months now. You need to get used to it, or at some point we end. At which she got very upset. She can understand, because if your daughter says that she might break up with you, or might not contact you again, that hurts. So she started throwing out all my stuff, which is a perfectly reasonable response, right? It wasn't really that much, there was two items, but she, the message was clear. Load them in and get them out of here. Okay, so I did. Later that night, I got a WhatsApp message. And in the WhatsApp message, the message was quite simple. It was all my fault. I was being rude. I hurt her feelings. I should be more considerate of her. And she didn't want to talk to me unless I was ready to apologize followed by a block on WhatsApp, Facebook, and all other socials that you can think of. <laughs> and that actually really hurt me. Because there we went again in the same cycle that we've been running for years. Me standing up for myself, me giving importance to the things that I think are important, and her going over it and spinning it in a way that it seems like it is my fault. And you know what? Standing up for yourself is not something that you need to be hurt for, something that you need to be chastised for. Standing up for something, standing up for yourself is something that all the human beings should be able to, without being judged for it, without being punished for it. So yeah, that hurt a lot. And it broke me down for a good week. I cried. I got with a lot of friends to talk about it. I messaged family members saying, hey, it's not just her story that she's telling. I also have my story that, she's, that I can tell. If you're still watching me, mom, 
I'm not saying you're a bad mother. You always had food for us, clothes. We could go do our hobbies. We could go to school. There was vacations. It was all kind of things. But the pattern of you always wanting to be right and not having any criticism, that is what broke us. I know I wasn't a great teenager. I did some terrible stuff. I wasn't always the best. I said things that I shouldn't have. But I don't deserve to be punished for standing up for myself. We're a week and a half further now. And all I can say is that it feels like a weight has dropped off my shoulders at this point. I am content with where we're at right now. I'm not happy that it happened. I'd rather have my mother still being in the picture and us having an amazing relationship together. But there is definitely a weight has been lifted. And that's the weight of not having to be careful when I send somebody a text message, not having the idea, oh, I go there, we might end up in an argument. Um, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not, no, I'm not gonna get misgendered by my mother again. If you're still here, thank you very much for watching this and for listening to me. This is cathartic in a way for me, talking about it, making content about it. For, and I wanna share this with other trans people out there. Know that family isn't everything. If they really make you unhappy and you have the means to get away from them, don't fear doing so. You'll build up relations with better people. I'm sure of it. Thank you to everybody who watched this. And please, I just really want to thank you for finishing this video, for watching it all the way through. I really appreciate it. I've been pouring a lot of time in this whole YouTube thing and seeing that my watch time is increasing, getting response from people who see the videos on Facebook is really 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 nice so thank you very much for being here my name is jade and i'll see you next week bye bye